Hello and welcome to this What's New session. In this session, we're going to walk through the new features that have been released for the inventory closing and recalculation functionality that greatly enhanced the user experience while processing the inventory closing and recalculation activities. I'll cover in this session the features that have been released till app 10.0.21. And I'll start with the most recent one, the inventory closing progress details. This feature will be released in app 10.0.21 and with this feature and new progress, detail view will be added to the closing and adjustment form. So you can monitor and review the progress of the recalculation or closing record. Then we'll review the new icons in the closing and adjustment forms. And after that, we'll review how to run the inventory reverse process in multi-threading. And I call it here reverse, not canceling, to be aligned with the feature that has changed the label from cancellation to reverse. After that, we'll see how to review the not fully settled transactions and how to manage their view with this feature. So with this feature, you can show a detailed view of the not fully settled transactions in transaction level or just summarize view in item level. At the end, we'll review how to display the inventory closing or recalculation log in a grid view. This is the list of features that we have. Now let's get started with a detailed view of each feature, how to activate it, and how to run it. So the first feature is the inventory closing progress details. This feature will be released in app 10.0.21, and it will be managed by the feature management, so you should enable it first. When this feature will be enabled, a new detail progress button will be added to the inventory closing and adjustment form. So after that, you can monitor the progress of the inventory closing or recalculation record. Before reviewing this feature, I'd like first to give a brief about the inventory closing and recalculation process and how it really works and how to manage the inventory closing and adjustment parameters. In this slide, we review the sequence of the inventory closing and recalculation process in a simplified view. So when the inventory close or recalculation job is started, the system will group the items into bundles that should be processed at the first bill of material level. The bundle is basically a group of items that will be processed together, and the maximum number of items per bundle is defined in the inventory and warehouse management parameter. And the next slide will review how to manage and configure this option. Then the system will move to the next step to process the calculation level. In this step, the system will pick a bundle of items that is ready for processing, perform the calculation for each item in the bundle, mark the bundle as processed, and continue with a new bundle. As per the available threads and the defined extra batch helpers in the inventory and warehouse management parameter, the system can run this process in a parallel processing. We'll also review this option in the next slide. Then the system will move to the next step, which is the finalizing calculation level. In that step, the system will check if there are more levels to be processed. If there are more levels to be processed, then the system will bundle the items once again and calculate this bond level. If there are no more levels to be processed, then the system will move to the next step, which is iteration completion. In that step, the system will check if items needed to be recalculated then the items will be bundled, recalculated, and the iteration will be marked as completion. If no items needed to be recalculated, then the system will move to the next step, which is posting to ledger. In the posting to ledger step, the system will post the transactions to the ledger accounts. And now let's review how to manage and define the inventory closing parameters. So in the inventory and warehouse management parameters, under the inventory accounting tab, you can define the inventory closing parameters. So first, you should define the extra batch helpers or the threads that will be used for the load balancing while running the inventory closing or recalculation job. So for example, I have here two. This means that while running the job of inventory closing or recalculation, two tasks will be running in parallel at the same time to manage this process. This number for sure shouldn't exceed the available threads in your environment. Then in the helper batch group, you can define here a default batch group that will be linked or associated to the inventory closing or recalculation job. This would be helpful, for example, if you wanted to dedicate or to specify a specific batch server or AOS 
for the inventory closing or recalculation batch. And then in the number of items per bundle, you should define here the maximum number of items that can be processed at the same time by a batch task helper. For example, here I have 10. This means that this is the maximum number that can be assigned to a single bundle. And now I could imagine the question in your mind, what is the optimal bundle size? But in fact, there is no optimal bundle size because this is a thing that should be considered and configured separately for every environment. But when it comes to configure the extra batch helpers, you should think about the available threads that you have in the environment. And when it comes to the number of items per bundle, you should think first about the number of items that you have, and second, the volume of the inventory transactions. So for example, if you have a, so many items, but with low inventory transactions, then you can increase the number of items per bundle. And when you run the inventory closing or recalculation process and you are observing a, a specific item or a specific bundle taking significant time until completed, so this would make sense to decrease the number of items per bundle. Let's give another example. Think about a bundle of 50 items and a specific item, only one item is taking hours until it will be completed. This means that until this item will be completed, the rest of 49 items will be waiting for this item. But when you decrease the number of items per bundle, this also will decrease and, in, and eliminate the waiting time. And this definitely will increase the performance and will increase the opportunity of the parallelization. So after reviewing how the inventory closing and recalculation work and the bundle logic, now it's the time to review the inventory closing progress details feature. So when you navigate to the closing and adjustment form, just select a record for a closing or recalculation, then click details, then click to progress details in order to view the progress details of this record. So after you click this button, you will see here the progress details of this inventory closing or recalculation record. Here you can find the, the voucher number, the stage, the current stage of this record, like in calculation or posting to ledger and so, then the state, which is processing or error or post and so, then a calculation details. Here in this section, you will find the details of the bundles that you have. So here we have bundle number four, five, six, and so on. And then also you can check the status of each bundle. So the bundle number four, it seems to be already ended. However, the bundle number nine is still processing. Also, you can, you can review from here the bundle details. So this is the bundle details of task of bundle number one, which is still in BOM level one, and the total number of items are six. If a specific item is currently processing or taking a time, then you can see the number of item here. Then you can also review the start time and the end time of this bundle details. So with this screen, you can first monitor the progress of the inventory closing, and also you can review the details of every bundle. This feature is somehow aligned with the previous one. This feature is about how to run the inventory closing reverse in multi-threading. So in App 10.0.18, a feature has been released to use the extra batch helpers to run the inventory closing reverse. So from the feature management, you can enable this feature, enable user-defined batch number setup for inventory closing reverse. After enabling this feature, now you can run the inventory closing reverse in multi-threading, like the normal inventory closing or recalculation process. The next feature is enhancement of the UI design of the inventory closing form by adding new icons and status labels to the form. So starting from at 10.0.20, this feature will be on by default, no need to enable it from the feature management workspace. So when you navigate to the closing and adjustment form, you will observe the new icons that have been added. So this one, for example, represents the status that this inventory closing record is in processing, paused, finished or ended, and the normal red X icon that indicates that this record has an error. The next point is not a really feature, but it's a change in the inventory closing and adjustment form by relabeling the cancellation button to be reverse. 
This is to avoid the user confusion and also to reflect the real nature of the reverse process as the system is reversing the ended record, not canceling. This feature is applied since app 10.0.13 and it will be on by default in app 10.0.21. If you prefer the old labeling, then you can turn off this feature from the feature management workspace. In order to turn off this feature, you can just navigate to the uh, feature management workspace, find the feature called change the label of cancellation in closing an adjustment to reverse, and then you can disable it. If you would like to keep working with the new labeling, so while navigating to the closing and adjustment form, you will receive this pop-up. That's stating that the button has been changed. And if you would like to turn off this feature, you can turn it off from the feature management workspace. While navigating to the form, you will observe that the button has been changed from cancellation to reverse. The next feature is about the not fully settled transactions. So with this feature, you can manage either to view the not fully settled transactions warning message in a detailed format in a transactions level, or to summarize this to be viewed in item level. This feature is applied since app 10.0.13, and this will be on by default starting from app 10.0.21. So I'm sure that at least you got this warning message at least for once. The warning message is unit cost price X can be wrong as the transactions cannot be fully settled. This is just a warning message that the system cannot settle these transactions due to the unavailability of the purchased transactions. So with the new feature, when you enable this feature, you will observe here a new option that will be added to the close inventory uh, dialog. This option called allow info log suppression. When this option is set to yes, this means that this warning message will be summarized in item level. So this is how it locks in the detailed transactions level. So here you have the uh, transactions details of every transaction per item. However, after you enable this feature, you can see here, this is a summarized bare item number that the unit cost to price of the item X can be wrong as there are transactions cannot be fully settled. The next feature is how to show the inventory closing log in a grid. This feature is applied since app 10.0.18. It is managed by a feature management, so you should enable the feature first. And after you enable this, this feature, you can review and display the inventory closing or recalculation log in a grid view. So if we go back again to the not fully settled trans transaction warning messages, I can imagine now the process that you perform to review these transactions. Probably you will control an A, copy this warning message, paste it in a word format, and then start to review the items. However, when you just enable this feature, you can display the same log or the same message in a grid view. So this is the log in a grid view. You will find here the item number, the stage when this message is generated, the exact invented transactions, and the message. You can also apply some filters to only display the messages uh, with severity warning or info or errors. For sure, you can export this log into Excel in order to perform your review and analysis. So this was a quick demonstration that showing the new inventory closing features that have been released till app 10.0.21. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Reach out if I can help. Take care and good luck.